Okay, okay, I've talked about this YouTuber before, but this time I'm here to deconstruct this douchebag entirely. How do you make a YouTube kids video? Well, first you make it obnoxiously loud. <gasps> <laughs> loud music, loud sound effects that make no sense, and loud color patterns and crap like that. Anything that would make you feel like you're zooming through a tunnel of ecstasy. Secondly, what's easier to do to embarrass yourself dressed as a pregnant Elsa? Well, turn to animals to gain attention. Animals are always cute and fun. Now add the nauseating trends to it. Surprise eggs, gummy bottles, Tide Pods, etc. You got yourself one spicy YouTube kids video. You take all those elements and put them together and it seems like you got some lighthearted content to farm on the algorithm, right? <laughs> Wrong! This is a shameless display of abuse towards animals that can't consent to any of this bullshit. Especially puppies, small primates, ducks, and fish. So, I did a little research about owning primates, because there's plenty of people out there that actually do own monkeys as pets. And whenever they show signs of stress and anxiety, it's through hair loss. Uh, they start to appear a bit more emaciated, and they show signs of malnutrition. Which is what this juvenile primate, that's the face and the logo of this ch kid's channel, displays in each video. If you take the two videos that are really popular, and they're separated a year apart, you can see some changes in the way the monkey looks. Such as fur being lost on top of his head, uh, him appearing more and more skinnier than ever, and when it comes to primates, they develop pretty quick. They develop, they develop a lot faster than humans do. So this monkey should be growing at this point. And in reality, he hasn't been. There's a video that was made maybe about eight months after the one I just displayed. And it shows the baby monkey now showing more signs of hair loss and emaciation. Up until recently, the monkey is shown to be sort of healthy looking in the most recent video from two days ago but how do we know this is the same monkey he could have got a different monkey because the other one died we will never really know there's no like behind the scenes footage of any of this but never mind about the uh the small monkey in the video live fish ducks and puppies are abused as well on this channel Live fish and the little ducklings are forced into surprise eggs for some of the content, as well as feeding a small little white puppy plenty of chocolate from Kinder Eggs for the sake of staying trendy. This channel is not small either. It amassed over a billion views, hundreds of millions of views, and each display of abuse is made to look colorful and cheery for clueless children. And it's not just the person who makes these videos that is bad. What's worse is clueless children who watch the content and tend to copy what they've seen on TV. Or now it's more so in front of their mom's iPads. So imagine watching these live ducks slowly suffocate in a surprise egg or feed a puppy a load of chocolate and imagine these little rugrats repeating the same action to their happy house pets. And no, none of this stuff is cleverly hidden, nor is it completely ignored. The AI that detects content that violates guidelines is pretty swift when it comes to finding it. The only unfortunate thing is they usually pick the wrong target. With a new video, although it's not one that I wanted to make, but I feel it needs to be said. The video that I made a month ago calling out a channel that basically abuses a small primate for YouTube kids content, feeding, ch also force feeding chocolate to dogs and giving them toys that they can choke on and putting live animals into surprise eggs for their fun content to be projected into millions of kids on YouTube kids has now been age restricted. So my appeal was rejected within 90 seconds. No, seriously, I fucking timed it.
And instead of going after the channel that's responsible for abusing and harming these animals, they went after me. Because by their logic, me using their footage to show what exactly is wrong with their content is harmful. But the person that is actually abusing these animals, forcing fucking live fish and ducklings into surprise eggs so you can open it up and later and be like, I'm so surprised. And not only that, feeding your dogs chocolate and a small primate chocolate, basically force feeding them candy so they can fucking behave in front of camera. And physically abusing the small primate. We have no idea what the hell goes on behind the scenes of this channel. Yeah, the first video I had made calling this disgusting channel out used footage from the channel that was publicly uploaded on YouTube. And YouTube was swift in dropping a big fat age restriction on my channel instead of the one responsible for the content. Isn't that a fuck twist of fate? I don't know why this has been a growing trend when it comes to like handling large sums of people, but this is exactly what usually happens when people upload disgusting content. There's always plenty of people that bring it to the attention of the platform, but rather than punishing the abuser or even the person that's creating the nasty content, they'll go punish the whistleblower instead. And the whistleblower usually gets a more severe punishment than the actual abuser. I don't know why. My guess is as good as yours as to why they do this. I guess it's because, you know, they don't want to look irresponsible towards the, the rest of the audience and the uh, advertisers that they have. You know, like, they want to show that they care in a way. So when some someone small brings something nasty to the attention of a large platform it kind of makes their security and their uh platform look weak in detecting this kind of stuff it's like a big dick concert contest in a way but it wasn't just this channel or uh, known as ht uh channel that caught my attention in fact this is only the first stop in a fucked rabbit hole on youtube and it leads you down a dark animal-oriented content wormhole, which include live feedings that are more like animal fight club videos with a hint of nefarious intent instead of actual educational content. But it led me to YouTube shorts as well, because th those things are not really regulated as best as YouTube videos. Um, there's people who abuse and emaciate their own pets and put them through the fake rescues. And it's not even a foreign country half the time. No, it's America. And these shorts are plentiful. One of the worst ones I saw recently was a guy quote unquote, saving a stingray by uncovering it from the sand while it's flipped upside down and releasing him back into the ocean. That's compelling and heartfelt footage right there. If the fucker holding the camera didn't grab him out of the water, flip him over and bury him only to come back a second time, this time with his phone out to quote unquote rescue it. What's even more incredible is how a lot of people fall for this obvious and poorly acted scam where people create a problem and film themselves solving it. And people fall for it like a worm on a hook to a fish. They just take the bait and run with it. And they share it all over the world. They share it with their friends. They l hit that fucking like button. This guy is changing the damn world with what he's doing. Now he's just scamming you. There's a whole channel dedicated to saving stray cats from dangerous situations. But in reality, it's just someone planting stray cats in bad situations to appear to be a hero. I absolutely love his complete checklist on his channel description to appear noble. Welcome to my channel. Help poor kittens, help stray cats, rescue baby kittens, save animals, adopt stray cats. Your support for the channel helps feed stray cats, treat them, and adopt and sugar kittens. Oh, here. Here. By far, the most disturbing fake rescue channel that I've witnessed was this dog rescue channel that uses the same dog and the poor animal is heavily abused in these fake rescue videos. This dog has gone through hell, so these guys can fucking profit from it. 
The cries of the dog panicking as he's slowly suffocating in this tar pit are heartbreaking. And the fact that once they get him out, the owners are going to put him into an equally dangerous situation so that he can quote unquote save him again. Whether it's a fake rescue channel, a scam to make someone look like a noble hero, or a kid's channel that profits heavily off of emaciating animals and wholesome in appearance colorful skits, and live feedings that are along the lines of animal fighting rings and fetishes, there is one common thing that ropes them all together, and that problem is animal abuse, which is something that YouTube needs to do a better job of addressing and investigating and punishing the channels responsible for it. That's all for this video.